Hey everyone, for those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Dr. Shirak Shemasyan and I'm a medical school admissions expert with over 15 years of experience helping students get into programs like Harvard, Stanford, Johns Hopkins, and UCLA. Today I'm going to list the eight most common mistakes I see students make with their med school personal statement, plus a strategy to avoid each one. If you're struggling to write your med school personal statement, you're not alone. For many students, writing a unique med school personal statement is one of the most difficult parts of the application process. In fact, I get more questions about this essay than any other topic. So why is the medical school personal statement so important? Last year, over 50,000 people applied to medical school in the United States. Of these 50,000 applicants, fewer than half ended up matriculating into U.S. medical schools. That's right, over 25,000 applicants who went through the application process did not get into a single school. Many of these rejected applicants had the stats, so the GPA and MCAT score, to get their applications through the door. Unfortunately, there aren't enough seats in medical school to accommodate every qualified applicant. Therefore, admissions committees evaluate extracurriculars and essays to determine who stands out versus blends in. If you don't submit a strong personal statement, you risk rejection when you otherwise would have been accepted. So this is why the personal statement is so important. Writing a great personal statement can significantly improve your odds of receiving an interview and ultimately acceptance. On the other hand, writing a mediocre personal statement will lead you to be unmemorable and increase your odds of rejection. My goal for this video is to outline the major mistakes that most rejected applicants make with their medical school personal statement and how to combat them. If you avoid these same mistakes by applying the strategies in this video, you'll be a step ahead of your competition and on your way to getting into your dream schools. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Mistake number one for the medical school personal statement is discussing experiences that you think seem impressive versus demonstrating qualities that admissions committees, also known as adcoms, want to see. So let's review a student example. Leah has the following activities listed on her AMCAS work and activities section. Biology research for three years, shadowing a physician for two years, volunteering as a math tutor for underserved youth in Los Angeles for six years, volunteering with a medical mission trip to Guatemala for two summers, president of a pre-med organization for one year. Given these choices, which experience do you think she would most likely write about? If you chose options C or D, you're correct. Most students would probably write about clinical volunteering in Los Angeles or their medical mission trip to Guatemala simply because they think these experiences are the most impressive. It may be, but it may not. The more important thing is that you focus on the qualities that will make you an excellent physician. So for takeaway number one, instead of selecting the most impressive experience, you'll want to figure out which qualities you want to highlight to adcoms and write about the experiences that reflect those qualities. Mistake number two, using a resume format or telling versus showing. Another mistake I often see students make is reciting a laundry list of qualities without any proof to back it up. Applicant one writes, I demonstrated compassion while volunteering at an assisted living facility. Applicant two writes, Volunteering at the facility with an elderly Latino population taught me how aging immigrants face cultural barriers while also navigating health problems from cancer to Alzheimer's. If these sentences were all you knew about these applicants, which would you think is more compassionate? Did you pick number two? Even though the second applicant doesn't use the word compassion, they are showing us their compassion through a critical reflection on what they learned from the volunteer experience. So for takeaway number two, make sure you use examples to demonstrate your qualities instead of listing them out like a resume. Mistake number three, saying, I want to be a physician so I can help people versus being specific. Every doctor wants to help patients who are sick or in need. And it's okay to mention this in your personal statement because it's such a critical aspect of working as a physician. However, Failing to offer a specific reason for your motivation to become a doctor or a specific way in which you plan to help your patients will make it hard for the admissions committee to see what unique approaches and insights you would bring to medicine. So let's take a look at the following examples. Applicant number one says, I want to become a physician because helping people would be an honor. Whereas applicant two says, as someone who has suffered from psoriasis, I want to become a physician so that I can educate patients and empower them to take an active role in their care. Applicant two makes it clear that they have thought critically about what it means to be a physician and gives adcoms confidence in their understanding of the role. So for takeaway number three, 
Get specific about why you want to be a doctor. Mistake number four, focusing on other characters versus focusing on you. It's important to remember that you are the one applying to medical school and therefore the focus should always be on you even if your story includes other characters. Let's look at this example. Sergio was my favorite patient. He had come to Dr. Hauser's office to have spine surgery after a devastating car accident. However, complications arose that required multiple additional surgeries until he was able to walk properly again. During his frequent visits to the office, we chatted about his days as a soccer player and his dreams of traveling to Europe to meet his newest granddaughter once his back was healed. When Sergio recovered from his final surgery, I realized I wanted to help more patients like him whose limited mobility severely impacts their quality of life. From this paragraph, we don't really learn too much about the applicant. Furthermore, almost anyone could have written about Sergio because the applicant didn't reveal very much about their role in this entire journey. Here's an example of how to discuss the same experience with the applicant remaining the main character. A devastating car accident had left Sergio, a patient from Mexico, with severe spinal injuries. After building rapport with Sergio over our mutual love for the soccer player Diego Maradona, I became known as Sergio's favorite at the clinic. I did my best to make his visits comfortable by offering additional support for his back while he waited to see the doctor and translating important documents. At a follow-up visit, his wife later told me that these small gestures were one of the reasons he continued to make all of his scheduled appointments, despite his distrust of doctors. After our conversation, I recognized that these small but meaningful interactions were a critical part of developing trust and can ultimately have a large impact on treatment outcomes. In this example, what stands out is the applicant's ability to build rapport, offer support, and help diverse populations with the aid of his language skills. He also makes a keen observation about the impact that these small gestures can have on a patient's health. So remember, there is nothing wrong with writing about patient interactions in your essay. However, takeaway four, you should always be the star of your personal statement. Mistake number five, describing the activity versus focusing on the impact. Let's look at these examples. Applicant one says, I was honored to conduct research under the guidance of Dr. Gretchen Silver, a leading scholar on ovarian cancer at Harvard Medical School. The lab's main research project took a look at the relationship between PTSD and ovarian cancer. Our findings indicated a stronger risk of developing cancer in women who had experienced symptoms of PTSD. Applicant two writes, while working in Dr. Silver's lab, I organized monthly writing workshops so each lab member could solicit feedback on their contribution to the research paper. This collaboration resulted in a work that was eventually published by the California Cancer Journal for Clinicians. So although applicant one worked with a well-known cancer researcher on an interesting project, we don't learn much about the student's involvement in the project. On the other hand, applicant two demonstrates initiative and leadership skills by detailing their contribution to the project. So takeaway number five, when writing about activities, make sure your impact is the primary focus. Mistake number six, presenting a general idea versus explaining your thinking. Let's look at this example. Applicant one writes, I am passionate about nutrition education because it's best for children to start learning healthy eating habits early. This is why I led nutrition workshops at a local elementary school. Applicant two writes, to my surprise, the students enjoyed the vegetable medley I cooked as part of the workshop. However, their interest quickly waned after a discussion about the lack of affordable, fresh produce available in their neighborhoods. This experience led me to realize that food access and nutrition education are critical components of a healthy school age population and that I wanted to do something about it. So it's clear that applicant too has not only done the work, but also thought about it critically. So takeaway six, Use specific insights to demonstrate your understanding of an obvious claim. Mistake number seven, writing an overly dramatic first sentence. So many students try to hook the reader with a dramatic first sentence that offers little substance. Here's an example. When the doctor announced the patient's time of death, I knew my life would never be the same. This first statement is overly dramatic and comes off as cliche. Now let's take a look at this example. 
Cooking is therapeutic for my grandmother and me. This sentence is not nearly as dramatic as the first example, but it's interesting and will help the applicant describe their reflections on this particular interest. So takeaway number seven, start your personal statement with a unique observation or idea that you'll unpack in subsequent paragraphs. Mistake number eight, writing in a way that can be replicated by other applicants. Remember, the purpose of the personal statement is to help you stand out in a good way to admissions committees. So let's take a look at these two examples. Applicant one writes, I developed a passion for helping children by volunteering at the local elementary school. Whereas applicant two writes, as the daughter of a dietitian, I took my knowledge of nutrition for granted. I didn't realize how many children lacked proper nutrition education until I started volunteering at St. Francis Elementary. Clearly, applicant two provides more unique details about their background and motivations. Again, remember, admissions committees are searching for candidates who can bring a unique perspective to their program. Whereas any student can volunteer at a preschool and write that first sentence, only the daughter of a dietitian could have written the second one. And note, you don't have to be the daughter of a dietitian to stand out from other applicants. You can be the shortest player on your club basketball team, a self-proclaimed comic book nerd, or the only biracial child in your rural town of origin. The point is, everyone has a unique identity that can be drawn upon to offer insights that no one else can. So takeaway number eight, include unique details about yourself that make you memorable. To recap, here are the eight tips that will help you write your best medical school personal statement. Takeaway number one, instead of selecting the most impressive experience as your topic, figure out which qualities you want to highlight and write about the experiences that reflect those qualities. Takeaway number two, use examples to demonstrate your qualities instead of listing them like a resume. Takeaway number three, get specific about why you want to be a doctor. Takeaway four, make sure you are the star of your personal statement, not someone else. Takeaway number five, when writing about activities, make sure your accomplishments and traits are the focus. Number six, Use specific insights to demonstrate your understanding of an obvious claim. Takeaway number seven, start your personal statement with a unique observation or idea that you'll unpack in subsequent paragraphs. And finally, takeaway number eight, write something that could only have been written by you. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that here so you don't miss out on new videos. You can also click the link in the description to get your free copy of my book, how to Get Into Medical School, which contains an in-depth analysis of a medical school personal statement written by a student admitted to a top five program. Thanks for watching. See you next time.